Hi, this is Rachel, and today in our Supervision Curriculum series, we're going to cover Topic 7, Preference Assessments. So, when we talk about preference assessments, we are talking about a way to determine what an individual, what a learner might enjoy, and that might be able to uh, be used to help support learning new skills. So, the question that we ask is what items or activities are likely to reinforce this individual's behavior? Reinforcers, which we're going to talk about more in the next topic, but reinforcers can vary considerably between individuals. Chocolate may be a reinforcer for some people, whereas other people may not like chocolate. It's important to think about what that particular learner, um, what they like, not what most people like. It's what does this particular individual like and enjoy. Reinforcers may change frequently. What is serving as a reinforcer or a preference at one moment may no longer function as a reinforcer or may no longer be preferred even five minutes later. For example, if you are eating a lot of salty snacks, you may only be able to eat salty snacks for a few minutes and then you don't want any more salty snacks. You want a refreshing beverage to um, go along with to rehydrate your mouth, right? Sometimes um, an individual will take an item when it's given to them, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's preferred or that they're motivated to work for it. Um, in order for a reinforcer to be considered a reinforcer, the item or the activity needs to be able to increase the behavior. So you need to be sensitive to how effective your reinforcers are and change them as often as needed. Uh, sometimes when we talk about preference assessments, people think of preference assessments that are done sort of at the beginning of treatment plan, and then those same items or activities are used as reinforcers for the next six months. I don't know about you, but I would not want the same two or three things for six months. I would want to change things up. Some of our learners might be consistent and might choose the same things over and over again, but some of our learners may want to change things up a lot more frequently. Also, I've heard sometimes where people will say, well, we use this as a reinforcer, but he doesn't want it anymore or he changed his mind, but we want him to be consistent. This is what he asked for, so this is what he gets. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense when we're talking about preferences and reinforcers. Uh, somebody's preference and, and what might be a reinforcer for that individual could change by the minute. So if they no longer want that item, by delivering it, we're now making them take something that they don't want, which is now an aversive. So we need to make sure that we are really in tune with and listening to our learners when they're expressing that their preferences and their reinforcers have changed. So you might need to conduct preference assessments um, frequently throughout one session. Um, oftentimes I conduct preference assessments or at least offer the choice for the individual to switch things up um, after every two or three opportunities to receive that. Or maybe if they've worked for, you know, 30 minutes and then we take like a 10 minute break. Um, after that 10 minute break, we talk about, okay, well, what do you wanna do on the next break? And we do those preference assessments after each opportunity um, so that we are constantly, uh, determining, constantly assessing what our learner is most motivated for in that moment. So how? How do we determine what our learner might want? If the individual can communicate, then ask them. Ask them what they would like to play with or what they want to do next. 
um, you can also ask the individual's parents or caregivers what the individual typically likes to do or what they typically play with. Um, do they usually spend time playing video games or reading books or playing with toys? That can give us an idea as to some of the items that this learner might prefer if the learner can't tell us directly. We can also um, conduct an observation, watch the individual during their free time and write down the things that the individual seems to engage with um, and enjoy. And you can operationally define engagement and, and what enjoy might look like for this learner and, and take data, determine what it is that they tend to do with their free time. We could also conduct a preference assessment. There are several types of preference assessments. I'm going to go into detail about one, the forced choice preference assessment, but there are other types. You could set out a lot of um, items and see how the learner spends their time and take data on that. That's a type of preference assessment. You could do multiple stimulus with or without replacement. So let's say I have four snacks. Um, I set out uh one bite of each of the four snacks they select the one they want if it's with replacement then the next presentation all four of those items are out there again and i record tally how many times the learner selected each type if it's without replacement then the after the presentation of four then the next presentation only has the three that they haven't picked and then the two and then the last one and that can presumably give you a ranking though i would tell you that from my personal experience i like to save especially if we're talking about edibles i like to save the best for last so it would really skew my um results so and, and a lot of those, those three types of preference assessments can take a good chunk of time. Sometimes we need a preference assessment that can be conducted very quickly and very frequently. That's why I like the forced choice preference assessment and that's what we're going to talk about here. So for the forced choice preference, we're going to pick some items and I'm going to demonstrate over here with whatever I happen to have. So, what do I have? There we go. Um, so, I am going to select a variety of items that the learner may be interested in. This might be from previous uh, observations, from the caregiver's report of what the learner likes, um, some things we've seen the learner express a preference for before, but I'm gonna get four of those items. I'm gonna pick two of those items, I'm gonna hold them up, and I'm gonna say, pick one. Now, the reason I say something simple, like pick one, um, is that uh, I don't want to label each item because an individual who engages in echolalia might repeat the last one that I said, but that may not be um, genuinely a, an expression of their preference. So I'm going to say pick one and they're going to pick one and I'm going to let them engage with it. Oh, speaker, you want to play with the speaker. I'm going to take the one that they didn't pick and I'm going to set it off to the side. I don't need it. Um, it's not a preference right now. After they engage with it for a few minutes, my turn, and we take it back. I keep it maybe in my lap so that it's handy because I'm going to need that one again. Now I grab the other two from my set of four. Pick one. Oh, lip balm. I let them engage with it. Put the other one to the side. We don't need that. My turn, take the lip balm back. Now I have the two items, the one they selected the first time and the one they selected the second time. And I'm going to offer those as a choice. Pick one, lip balm, you chose lip balm. So you saw that I'm labeling it after they select. That's so that my label does not um, uh, interfere with their ability to select. And then how they're selecting honestly is up to the individual. If they want to say the name of it, that's great. If they want to point to it or reach for it, that's fine too. I've also worked with learners who, when you offer two choices, would push away the one they didn't want. So 
we worked towards being able to mand for the one they wanted, but I could still determine which one they wanted and give it to them because they could signal what they didn't want. Now, sometimes we might present two items and the learner might not choose either one. Great, toss them both, grab two more items. Our learner doesn't have to choose from those. Again, our goal is to find something that the learner wants to engage with right now, not make them engage with something that we think they should want to engage with right now. So I love this first choice um, because it can go very quick. You saw that I was able to demonstrate it really fast and you don't have to have um, a big setup and the learner doesn't have to have an extensive um, uh, communication uh, system to be able to uh, reach for what they want or push away what they don't want. And you can determine preference then that way um, with learners of lots of skill sets. Now for the talking about preference assessments, let's talk about the PREMAC principle. Um, so the PREMAC principle is based on the premise that you can um, get an individual to engage in a non-preferred activity by offering them access to preferred activity afterwards. For example, um, if the individual likes to watch videos more than learn numbers, then they might be able to get video time by completing uh, the number learning activity. Um, it's basically reinforcement, but at the activity level. First this, then that. First put on your shoes, then we'll go play outside. Um, one of the ways to identify a preferred activity is to teach it. So what this means is that we might start with um, activities or items that the learner is motivated with, but we might expand their interests by showing them and teaching them how to engage in some other activities that then we might find they have a preference for. So for example, um, you might teach an individual how to play board games or video games. And after they have learned that skill, they now find board games and video games as preferred activities. And then you can incorporate those into your learning opportunities in the future. So the assignments. Operationally define preference assessment for a provider to conduct during a session. So basically, what are the step by steps? Uh, what are the actions that a provider would take to conduct a preference assessment with a specific learner? And two, describe how often a preference assessment should be conducted. Um, think about what uh, actions or vocalizations or signs your learner might be displaying that would signal that it's time to reassess the uh, the possible reinforcer, the, the preference, and see if their preference has shifted. So if you have questions or comments or you want to complete the assignment and get my feedback, please feel free to comment below. And if you'd like to continue to see uh, these topics as they come up, please feel free to subscribe. Thank you.